All right. Are we ready to start this? No, not at all. But I'll, but we should do it anyway. I think we've already done that bit. I know. I think we have. I think you need a new bit. Are is your head getting cut off, or is that just no. also that camera? It's just the monitor. Just the monitor. All right. We lost the bit though. What was the bit? The bit that we've already done, which is why well, it's a bit again. I'm done. Okay. Okay. Can we start now? Yeah. Thanks. Are we ready? Look at the camera, or no? <laughs> not with that face, you're not. <laughs> There's a camera. I need a haircut. I'm really bad. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> I think your head's getting cut off. It's not. Okay. If we have to redo this because your head's getting cut off, I'm going to be so don't, mad. Don't hit the button. I don't want to hit the button. Or just, it's fine. Let me just look. There's plenty of bit at the front of this. Okay, yeah, your head's in the, your head's in the TV safe, but not the title safe. Mm hmm is that legit? Yeah. I'm not going to put titles over my face. Oh, God. Anyway. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that's a perfect opportunity for you to start this. Okay. <laughs> Don't look at me. What was the name of the show again? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the Untitled Classic Gas Podcast. Okay. Or welcome to Untitled. No, Could welcome. We <laughs> welcome to the Untitled Podcast by Quest and Chaos. See, I did that change up there. By Quest and Chaos. Yes. Yeah. Finger guns. <laughs> It's episode seven. Oh boy. For March, May. Oh boy, we're, May. we're already gone. We're there already. We're back to March again. Cool. Cool. So anyway, we're going to talk about things that we want to talk about and stuff yeah. that's new. Pretty much, we're just going to talk about the wick. Yeah, I think so. Because There's a lot going on, and I think the wick is probably the most important thing. So finger gun us into it. Seven. Episode seven. <laughs> Six, seven, who knows what it is. We missed last week. How We're many back. fingers do you have? I have 10. So when we, when we get to episode right. 11, then we'll figure out you gotta... we just recycle them at okay. that point. Then it's finger finger guns again. I don't know. Anyway, so <sighs> where are we going to start? We're going to start with the wick? Uh, yes. Okay. So what's our first? Step one. Look at the document. Mm-hmm. Yep. The document says... Wretches and Rewards Mini Adventures. Mm -hmm. This is actually a cool uh, Kickstarter. They reached out to us um, to see if we would want to talk about this. And we're like, oh, yeah, because it looks awesome. Um, it is uh, it is a D&D supplement of miniature adventures that is coming out. Mm -hmm. And their whole philosophy is instead of using the random... Um, loot tables. Loot tables in the back of the Dungeon Master after you finish your encounter, mm -hmm. your uh, magical items and loot is tied to a villain. Yeah, so if you watch the video, the video talks about just the premise of what they're doing is the fact that it's like, well, once you kill an enemy and you loot the body, you get these magical items. Mm -hmm. And so their thought is, well, why didn't, if you have a magical item, you use it during the fight? Right. I think Which again, for me, it kind of makes me upset because I'm like, but if all the like fireballs are gone out of that wand, I don't want that wand anymore. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. So that's the philosophy behind it is that they are building loot into bad guys for you, and then they are also building many of many scenarios, so many fights around those bad guys. Yes, uh, and it looks like they've got a number of... I'm just waiting for you to be like, no, totally wrong, wrong Kickstarter. They have a number Get of out. adventures that are already uh, built out. Six mini adventures, in fact, that you can see on your screen. Mm -hmm. um, 16 unique magic items. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the layout, the design all looks cool. The artwork is nice. Um, they come with maps, which is very cool. Okay, for those of us who don't have any maps. Right. Meanwhile. I don't know how well they'll play on stream. That's always that's well, always our caveat. Yeah. Of, hey, that is great. It's shiny, and it's going to reflect. Yeah, so that's when you get hairspray for your maps. Yeah, hold their hair in place. Stylish. And then they all, all those maps are from Flavortown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, boy. So what is the title of your favorite? I mean, I, did I just go to it? Yeah, I think you did. Well, first of all, they spelled it wrong because that's not how I spell liches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the rest of the world, that is spelled correctly. I put a T in lich. 
as you as you do. Yeah. Well, it rhymes with a couple other words. Stitches, in fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, there it is. Stitches. Oh, that, I mean, honestly, just that is really funny. Eh? Liches get stitches. But everybody knows they do. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not that funny. Liches usually give stitches. Well, they don't do the stitching. How many they liches? Require... I've killed... I've, I just about to say I killed stitches. I've killed liches before. How many? At least two that I can remember. Okay. Okay. Did you did somebody give those liches stitches when when it was all done? Mm-hmm. No, yeah. actually we did. We gave them <laughs> we gave them wounds with no stitches. Take that, liches. Exactly. Okay. Liches don't get stitches because they're dead again. Mm-hmm. Kill their so, factory. I will also want to see falling up. So we don't do enough aerial combat. I think that we mm. spend on the channel way too much time on ships. Um, yes, that uh, partly due to the nature of transportation. Of having one character wanting to be a pirate captain. Well, deep down, we all want to be pirates. I mean, let's okay. not. You can be a pirate in the sky. Yes, air pirate captain. Yes, you can be. I consider myself a pirate of the sky. It's a whole different story so for a whole... So do seagulls. So do seagulls. Especially seagulls if you have... are not pirates. If you have french fries, they become pirates. No, they're not. They're bandits. They're not pirates. Anyway. So what's your favorite? Which one do you want to look at? Uh, the Royal Pain and the Assassin? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, especially yes. if I can kill an assassin or two, because really, assassins are a royal pain in my ass. <laughs> assassin. <laughs> All right. They've got a bunch of cool stretch goals as well. Unlocking more adventures, more maps. Uh, gee, could those be miniatures? Oh. I don't, I don't know. Oh, God. Honestly, I don't know, because I can't read that far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Wait till we get to another topic. I'm just... You need glasses, man. Just get the glasses. All right. So anyway, do you need to command plus? No, because it'll screw up the recording. Okay, whatever. Uh, it um on, honestly, it it looks cool. It says so, 3D printable model file. So uh, I would suspect that that is. So the, those are miniatures. Exactly. But they're not miniatures. They're they're the you, files of miniatures. Yeah, they're your problem miniatures essentially. Yeah. Is what Which I mean, I back a lot of things that are just files. Of I know, makes me insane. So anyway, so this is cool. Uh, wretches and, and rewards. Very cool looking stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, fun. I mean, just fun looking stuff. No, I do like it. I mean, you were talking about the fact that there's a lot of loot in Xanathar's. Um, yes. What I like about this is this brings specific villains to a scenario. Mm -hmm. So building a scenario sometimes is difficult. And you, like I've done one mitten before where I've had to build a scenario based around a theme. And you had to suffer listening to me going, what about this? What about a hag? What about a sea hag? But the hags are in a coven better than like the sea hag in a coven. And you're just like, please shut up. And uh, then I wrote, I read another book about monsters specifically, how to play them as best you can. And that was still kind of annoying where I feel like all of that research is done right here for me. So, so I would say the caveat to uh, something mm -hmm. like this is I personally feel all of those um, DM accessories that are there for uh, to help you build or, or quickly grab stuff is mm -hmm. for you to build an adventure or an encounter ahead of time. Um, it, I would say, 60% of the time, it doesn't turn out that way. It turns out in like, oh, let me just grab something and go. And or your players are like, we're not going there today. You're like, all right, whatever. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we have the, we've got a whole bunch of cards, card decks mm -hmm. from Nord Games and Loresmith that mm -hmm. is that sort of instant, oh, what did you get for loot? Oh, it's a turtle shell that is a scroll. Kind of an interesting thing. I don't understand that. Uh, it's, a, it's a ranger scroll, but it's written on a turtle shell. Oh, I understand. It's not like a the... weird turtle shell that then there's like a hidden <laughs> that the scroll comes Just... out of it, <laughs> out of the butt of the turtle shell. That would be cool. You could, yeah, actually it could be a, a toilet paper holder that you carry around with you and then pull some toilet paper out. That's amazing. That's amazing. Maybe a beef jerky dispenser. <laughs> Hopefully you can tell them <laughs> apart. Okay, so on that note. Um, what are we talking about? You can certainly do this yourself, but these are done for you. Um, Plus, uh, mini, the, the idea, the thing that I like about this, mini adventure. It's not a huge giant campaign. So mm -hmm. most of the modules that are out now are world spanning giant campaigns. This is cool, you know, either do for a few sessions or, you know, do for a long one shot. Mm -hmm. You know, cool, fun sessions yep. that you don't need 
to level your character from 1 to 20. Yeah. And also what I like about this is that the maximum pledge dollar amount is $40. So it's not like some of the things that we look at, like the board games, where it's like your entry point for Frosthaven is $100 yeah. and your exit point for Frosthaven can be three north of $300. Mm -hmm. um, so this is definitely, to get the full ball of wax, it's definitely less expensive. Uh, was this, well, actually, was... What yeah. are you discovering now by reading nothing, them? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. So, very cool. Uh, I think we should um, look into the other one. Uh, on our Discord, uh, Rick O actually recommended this one to us. This is the Deck of Mini, animated spell, tarot, and more. Okay. Um, tell me your thoughts. Tell me, tell me about your childhood, Thomas. Well, so my initial thought when I saw the uh, first version of these, uh, the monster cards or, mm -hmm. or what. Yeah, because this is the were. second time yeah. that they're doing these um, animated spell, spell I, cards, if you will. I didn't research it enough and was sort of dismissive because, because back when I was a child... Um, we had sport flick cards, which were, you know, it's like a, a, a baseball yeah. and show you like, you know, batting and then like this, but it was just two. And I was like, oh, it's, I mean, I, okay, so you have two things and a spell. I'm like, okay, I guess. You it's didn't like, like how they were made of like that weird plastic and you could like take your fingernail and be like, yeah. Okay, anyway. I wouldn't do that because that would ruin the value of the baseball cards. Oh, God, dork. Meanwhile. Which, uh, that's okay. The internet ruined the value of all baseball <laughs> cards because suddenly it went from something like, oh, yeah, there's, you know, five of those in your city to uh, there's a million of them, a billion. Mm -hmm. So they're worth nothing. Yeah, but what condition? Uh, well, I don't know. Okay, let's not talk okay. about baseball so, cards. So uh, the deck of mini, um, I think if we play this video, it's about five to ten minutes of something that has nothing to do with the deck of mini. Mm, I wouldn't say five to ten minutes, but I'd say let's skip to, like, 30 seconds in. It's a cute animation. Mm-hmm. Okay, 30 well, seconds. and also, too, in this animation, the girl here, the girl pulls out the spell card and then it comes out. If that could do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I if would, it was an actual spell card, yes. That especially, wait a minute, I don't have a spell card, but let's just say. You could go to the bank. It's this swatch, and you're like, and it just punches you in the face. That would be the. Yeah, one. you can go to the bank and be like, I'm going to fireball this. <laughs> this is a tavern I'm going to steal from. Fireball. Anyway, uh, these have like eight different levels of animation. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's so as you tilt it, it builds yeah. out essentially. So that's a lot cooler than they were back mm -hmm. in the old days. Well, and also too, the art is definitely better thought out. Yeah. It's much if you if you use a Thomas word cooler. It's more cooler. I don't know. It's the coolest. <laughs> more cooler. Yep. Okay. Anyway, what were we talking about this? Um, one thing I don't understand is how would you integrate the tarot cards? I don't know. Oh, wait. Let me digress, though. Before we get to the tarot cards, here, besides having the animated spell card, you also get, like, a full... You get the full spell on the back. Then you get who uses the card. You know, so if it's a cleric card or a wizard card or a druid card or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever arcana it is on the bottom. Wow. Look at all those decks. <sighs> Let's not go back to the deck jokes. I think that was last week. Um, anyway, and I think this one is also for higher levels, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I like how they show it being washed. Because what's... Uh, well, never they're made mind. of plastic. Yeah, they, I know. You know, so in case you're an environmentalist and, and don't appreciate lots of plastic, you might not want to. Or if small children lick them or touch them, there's that. Anyway, or yeah. you get them sticky and then somebody walks around yelling, everything's sticky now. Because that didn't happen today. Yeah, here's the tarot decks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just tarot, but they're animated. But I, but again, how are you using them? As you would any tarot deck. Never. Right. <laughs> Hello. Because that's made up. It's not actually a thing. It's not, you don't tell fortunes in real, in real life. Uh, in Curse of Strahd, drawing from the tarot deck determined where things were and everything. So, I know. I yeah. wish there was actually a little bit more of that in Curse of Strahd instead of just all the dumb things that you do. So, anyway, these look cool. Um, there are a lot of them. What kind of pledges are we looking at here? Um, pledge $30 for one spell deck. It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. We're about halfway through this campaign. They asked for twenty thousand dollars. They're at five hundred and seventy-six thousand. Because a deck is thirty dollars. Well, when but we again, when we do our Kickstarter, our deck is only going to be fourteen fifty. 
Okay, so think about you, this deck is going to be twice as much as just like a standard deck of cards that Which have a regular surface. Totally but you get makes this sense cool because animated you get the cool stuff. Plus the artwork. I mean, I'm sure yeah. this artwork wasn't that easy to make, yeah. and I think the artist did a really pretty, a oh. really pretty job. You have convinced me that they are worth the value that yeah, I think that so. they are charging. Mm -hmm. However, I, I I don't think I need fifty dollars for an animated tarot deck. So you, but you get like. That's, okay, here's where my math becomes or terrible. Or a hundred dollars, you get. Ooh, actually, you get <laughs> one, two, three, four. And you get about thirty some cards per deck. You know, so when you look at the six level spells, you're getting Blade Barrier, Chain Lightning, Circle of Death, Conjure Fae, yeah. Contingency, Create Undead, Disintegrate, I Bite. Starter Bundle saves you twenty dollars. Wall of Ice. Um. So, considering we have Gale Force 9, I'd say. Well, and that's my question to you is how does this compare? Because essentially they do the same thing as mm -hmm. Gale Force 9. You get more cards in the Gale Force 9 decks yeah. for less money, but you don't get fun, um, it's the fun animation factor. stuff. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what you're paying for is the cool animation, which mm -hmm. is what you were paying for, which is what cost them money to, you know, to make mm -hmm. and produce and to, so... Yeah, just look at the eyeball. Yeah. Just look at the eyeball. Scroll so, down to the eyeball. Uh, where's the eyeball? Level four, my friend. Level four. Ding. Is, Going is up. Is that scry? There. I don't know. It could, it could be, I don't know, cast eyeball. Warden Canyon's marvelous eyeball? Yes, it is. In fact, should we just make a spell call that? Sure. And then you've got a bunch of other things that are unlocked. Uh, condition cards. Mmm. So you can throw these out in front of your player and be like, nope, and you are blinded. Actually, I want to see the one for Exhausted is more like it. Because that happens to us a lot. Somebody staring into their computer. <laughs> I know. Somebody just taking a nap, basically. And then they get tokens. Cool. Mm -hmm. The tokens are pretty. So yes, anyway. Um, Definitely cool stuff. Great looking artwork. Mm -hmm. um, the Deca Mini is high quality stuff. I don't know if it's for me. Really? Yeah. I suppose it's a little too cutesy for you. It's a little bit more my alley, but... Yeah. I think you're going to see a, th a theme going forward of of my feelings. The theme of my feelings. <laughs> Story. Anyway, the next thing... Uh, what are we going to go do? We're, the next thing up is, is... You can talk about this. Uh, I'm over it. I don't need to talk about it. So this is Dawnshade. It's a board game. It's a JRPG. Whatever that means. You had to look it up because I, I asked you to look it up because I refused to look it up. Uh, what does it mean, Thomas? I don't know. It's a board game for furries is all as far as I can see. It is not. Um, oh, Lord. Anyway, so it's kind of a pseudo open I, I game we play. talking about it. No, but you sh if you bring it up, you should at least mention it. You shouldn't be like, this game that we are never going to mention. Don't fund it. Uh, it's already funded. Exactly. Too late. <laughs> it's um, got great artwork. No, I think here's the only reason why I think we're talking about it is that everybody else is talking about it. So it's on Board Game Geek. I forgot it was someplace else that I was mm -hmm. looking. And I was like, well, maybe I should look at this. And then I decided this isn't my ball of wax. But yeah. I also don't really like Gloomhaven. Um, you know, Tainted Grail again made my eyes want to roll back into my head. I was so bored. Mm -hmm. um, and this does have some elements of that that just made me, when I was watching the video and reading about gameplay, that I was like, mm, not for me necessarily. So it feels like an open world where you lay out the tiles and you make choices as far as where you go. So it kind of feels a little mm -hmm. Tainted Grail in that respect. Um, I and believe in as, as every tile comes out, it's randomized. So, you, mm -hmm. so your boards are never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you have a scenario book as well. Um, so, I think what killed this Kickstarter for us is the slow pace of the narrator in the video. Well, and the voice is terrible as well. But anyway, wow. I okay, digress. that's uh, that's a bit brutal. But anyway, Don Shade, would... whatever, it's out. It's on Kickstarter. It's got eighty two thousand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, I think we move on. Okay, moving on. There's dice and cards and things. Whatever. Yep. Specialty dice, yeah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, can we go back to one first? Did you pull out Menagerie of Magic Oh, I, oh my gosh, I ah! didn't. I didn't. Mm. So this is the one that actually I wanted to talk to you after Wretches, um, Wretches and Rewards Mini Adventures. 
I did 1.5. See, between 1 and 2, <laughs> 1.5. The That's magic the of numbers. Spell deck. Oh, I see. It's, it's hidden. It's unhighlighted. It's hidden. Anyway, so I digress. So the way I set up the show that was completely ignored, as usual, um, was the fact that we would talk about riches and rewards and that you get loot, but also loot in conjunction with monsters, in conjunction with the scenario. Mm -hmm. um, this one, Menagerie of Magic, is somewhat similar in the fact that the author, Adam O'Brien, apparently has been creating magic items and collecting kind of magic items or loot, if you will, mm -hmm. um, for I don't know how many years, but he has over 700 of them in his personal collection. So, I don't have 700 of anything. Magic cards? No. We better not. We'd be Buttons. completely angry about that. Maybe on that's clothes. Like a, that's like a box of magic cards. Okay. I mean, do you think there are 700 buttons across all of our clothes? Yours, yes. <laughs> not even counting mine. All right. Maybe. Um, there's like 700 hangers in your <laughs> closet. Um, so this is Menagerie of Magic. Thanks. A collection of magic items mm -hmm. for D&D 5e. Yep. Mm -hmm. Clearly, 2,800 people think this is great. Yeah, they do. Um, and it's a book of stuff. I mean, I'm just blown away by the fact that this guy was like, I'm going to make a magic item, and then just started notebooks of magic items. Yeah, I mean, hey, if if you are doing cool stuff and rewarding your players, mm -hmm. um, definitely sell it. You know? <laughs> I, I definitely have a deck that I'm looking as a DM to reward your that's players. That's not rewarding your players. That's punishment. Oh, yeah, actually, there are rewards. Never mind. There, I was kidding. There are rewards. Yeah. Um, can we continue with Kickstarter? What? What? Continue, please. Uh, anyway, so they have uh, a bunch of cool magic items. Most mm -hmm. of them are uh, available to anyone. Uh, there are some that are specific uh, class or race mm -hmm. or just yep. race based. Um, but like dwarven, um, what is this? The uh, like the the braid beads, braiding beads, oh, where it gives right. you a uh, plus one to a random attribute if you braid it into your beard as a dwarf or into your hair. Can you just try that in real life? Um, I believe you get a minus one to charisma anytime you do something like that. <laughs> anytime you put a hole in your face, minus one to charisma. All right. Anyway. Not necessarily. I, Lies. That's that's. Uh, anyway, continue about the braid beads. Uh, anyway, beard braid I, beads. I am very surprised that that is not beard does beads? not require. They're not beer beads. No. Okay. Uh, what, but although, <laughs> what if you just had like the little, like the cast, like a St. Bernard yes. as a magic item? Yes. It was just a, uh, it was like a call, a St. Bernard collar and it was an, a never ending like whiskey. Okay. Anyway. I uh, think it's a great idea. I think, Personally, I, I think, think you should put it around Aaron's neck and the fact that you can't take it off unless like certain criteria happen. I think that's genius. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so those don't require <laughs> attunement. You're although, like, whatever. Whatever this is down here, I can't read it. Uh, that also requires, that one does require attunement. Should so, I get you glasses? It's fine. Okay, so can I say one more thing? Yeah. Okay, so there are two other things of which I seriously can't remember the second one now because I'm fixated on buying you old people glasses. In my head, I'm already trying to figure out what I have they're... contacts in. It doesn't mean you can't. Anyway, you can wear old people glasses over your contacts. Okay. Anyway, so these, um, some of the magic items work in conjunction with other magic items. So you could have a list of like, let's say three to five magic items that actually work together. And if you use them together, you unlock special powers. Um, in fact, I think, didn't, did Andrea do something like that for our players? Or was it... Something that just had four levels to it. Like on a certain day, you can use a certain item. Just making shit up now. I think you are just making shit up right now. I'm a genius. Print it. Okay. Anyway. Um, and then there are also mounts or essentially animals that you yeah, can call for. Mounts, yeah, magical mounts. Yeah. So it'd be like a bag of tricks. Ex yeah, it's like a bag Except of tricks. Except you can ride it. Just like a bag of tricks. Well, were you supposed hoggle to shite? ride? You know, hoggle shite, you really can't ride. But Yeah, I was going to say, are you really supposed to ride the bag of tricks? No. I mean, not the bag, but the animals <laughs> that come out of the bag. Well, if it's a giant elk and he's friendly, of course. Okay. Anyway. If you're a halfling and it's a panther, and it's friendly, 
Yeah. Anyway, so what am I saying about this? I was just blown away by the fact that the guy's story is like, yeah, I had collected 700 magic items that I would made up over the years. Yeah. I, okay. Cool. I like I like the artwork. I think it's a cool mm-hmm. style. Um, it's a uh, it's it. Yeah, I don't know. I just it it just it's nice. It's cool. This is the one that <laughs> has pretty. a. This is the one that has the seventy. Oh, this is in what? pounds. Yeah. Uh, Didn't gonna, you understand that this guy's from yeah, okay. England? Well, that's gonna make this a lot more expensive. Yeah, it is. Um, but they have uh, the limited edition foil variant hardcover. I don't know what is does not even show you what it looks like or no, but but it's there. No, but I'm sure it'll get destroyed if we had it. So, um, well, just a oh, is that a ray gun? I can only hope so, because that's what we need in D and D is more lightsabers and ray guns. Energy blades. Actually, it's a pulse cannon. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, the cool stuff. Um, there's there's a lot of D and D five E accessories. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that means that. There is mm-hmm. a market for it, or obviously, obviously there is a market for it. But are we then coming towards the end of fifth edition? Possibly, because well, especially because we haven't seen Wizards put out what was the last thing, Wild Mount. Yeah, which was just a little bit ago, and then they have one coming out that's delayed because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Should have been out by now. And what's that one? The Odyssey of Theros, which is another Magic the Gathering based. Oh, uh, like Ravnica. Yeah. Okay. Which. <sighs> What? I don't know. What about it? I still haven't read Ravnica. Mm. There's elephant people in it. It's right. magic based. I don't care. Let's move on okay. to what you, what you want to talk about. Pretty things. Dun, 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 dun. Holy cow. I know. Just watch the dollar amounts. Just hold on. Like, we can just sit here and... and just watch it spin uncontrollably. Wow. So right now, just to let everybody go know that this was... So I found Heartbeat Dice... Um, on Twitter that they were showing lots of pretty dice that they were going to make and then they said that they were going to launch Kickstarter. I was like, please keep me posted when this happens. And so this actually launched 57 minutes ago. Yeah. 57, in fact, we logged on at 2 o'clock and how much did they, I don't even know how much. It was like, it was 10 Yeah, they had two backers or something like that. Something ridiculously small. In under an hour, they are at almost nineteen thousand dollars so i mm-hmm. suspect that probably by tomorrow they're going to reach they're probably going to get funded tomorrow yeah so dice are well a crazy expensive well these are metal so a scourge of the industry heartbeat dice <laughs> um also has they also are selling their regular polyurethane or whatever regular dice are made out of out of their website so you can get those dice so and these dice are um, both metal as well as hard edge. Um, they also do have other accessories like boxes. Um, they are sold out of like some bracelets. They have dice vaults. They have pins. But essentially, it highlights the LGBTQ community, um, you know, as well as POC by using some of the designers for these styles and designs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really about, you know, highlighting a community that doesn't get great representation in our in this gaming area, you know, by having them just create products for people who want to represent. And personally, I think they're really pretty. I like these dice. Those are my favorite. My only problem with these dice is that I think you have to buy them with the box. So that's the Rainbow Sharp Edge set plus box. And I just want the Sharp Edge set. Here's... Huh. <sighs> You know what I would actually like? Hmm. And this may be stupid of me. I would love to have one of each set. Like a full set in each one of these colors. Mm-hmm. I think these are super pretty. Yeah, I do. I like the colors. I mean, that's why I like it. I see. So you just have a blue set, an orange set, a red set, a yellow set, a teal set, yeah, a green set. I still okay. I still think... I mean, I'm all of my sets are color-based. So that's, mm-hmm. that's how they're organized and everything. Okay. So having weird random... Not weird, but having random colors that aren't. I see. So you would get this mixed up with your other dice. Yeah. Just going, okay, these are red ones, so this must go with the glossy red ones. However, these are still so good looking that I might want these. Okay. Even if I need to buy a box to get them. Uh, okay. Keep scrolling, though. I mean, I I like the fact that they go with the heart. Keep scrolling. Okay. Come on. You can do it. Um, they do create Ooh. box. What? That's the box. Well, I'm not going to mix that up with my other sets. No, you're not because it has a specific box. It has a, oh, I like it. And then it's it's 
hmm. order of colors is cool too. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. there's LEDs. Is there LEDs in the box? I like how you were like, I don't know about this too. Well, I well, that's <laughs> I was I was I've been suckered in by their amazing pretty dice. And then obviously they have pride sets, um, bisexual, pansexual, asexual. I am, mm -hmm. I am color wise. And design-wise, I am less excited about these. I think okay. that these, this is a lot. These are very busy. There's a mm -hmm. lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, that's not what I want in my dice. I, okay. I like that they are out there and making them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just not particular for, for me. Ooh. Really? I, I like the transgender color. I really like this one. You can't, you like dice that you can't read the numbers on. And <laughs> those know. are perfectly... <laughs> easy to bad, cheat with <laughs> bad dice because you can't see the numbers on. i also like these colors you can it's hard to, look at this 10 or that's a 20 i don't know what number it is that's terrible it's a 10 it's a whatever makes you pass in cthulhu so so um this it's, is yes, form over function right this is not my st clothing style absolutely no it's not your clothing <laughs> style Absolutely not. And I, Beg, you I would am, yell at me if I wore that out of the house. If I wore this dice out of the house, I like those as well. I am never going to be accused of being fashionable. No, you're not, sir. Um, I but was anyway, class trendsetter in high school. Mm -hmm. But it's also about support. I do like these colors as well. I mean, what? 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 Yeah. Okay. I was, right. the, I, was the, I was super trendy in high school. Think about it. No. Think about I it. I don't want to. I was so far advanced. I was playing D&D &D in high school. And now no. it's cool 20 years later. Huh? Huh? Apparently a trendsetter. Can't. I can't handle it. Um, go down to the Q Games Workshop. So What you were you yelling about Q Games Workshop? You were yelling something at me before. Uh, they're also intricate and... Um, Keep scrolling. So they also offer other success accessories. Wait, wait, wait. What? There it is. Oh. Roll initiative. I know it's adorable. It's not really your thing. Um, I do like the DM screen. I cannot afford two hundred fifty five dollars for wow. a DM screen. But you do get like those little notches and your initiative tracker in the top of the DM screen, and you can hang and put many things there, which always helps. So here we go. Q workshops. I like this. I know you hate it. Yeah. The, so, and again, this is this is a uh, Q Workshop does a lot of very intricate and style design uh, designs, mm -hmm. um, which so, some of them I really like. Some of them I think are too busy. Uh, these I fall into the a little bit too busy. And again, for me, I like them because they are too busy. It's more about the style yeah. than it is about the functionality. You know what I mean? You, I, where's my dice box? My dice box is right here. I could literally just be like, yeah, that's uh, something. I mean, how can you not read that that's a zero? That's an 80. That's a 10. And these are all my cheater dice together. Anyway. You're like, using cheater dice yeah. when... When nobody can even verify like, what you're rolling. Well, it helps also when other <laughs> people can't verify that I can't see what the hell the dice are to begin with. It just makes it all so much better. All right. Continue. So, I'm sorry. I cut you off from Games Workshop. I'm sorry. Key Workshop. What did you want to say with them? Very intricate. I think it's pretty. You think it's terrible. Um, one thing I actually did like about this Kickstarter is that instead of trying to have to figure out what pledge level you're doing and what you get per pledge level, you just have a menu. So the Metal Pride set is 50 bucks. The Rainbow Sharp Edge that we like plus box is 60. Um, That's not bad because it comes with that cool box. The Q Workshop is only $13. Um, the dice vault is 45, pins are 13. So essentially you just add up whatever you want and then put it in the pledge. So if you look at the Kickstarter, I think it's interesting that they're just like $1 or more. So now you just put yeah. your dollar amount in. Because when I bought those pins, mm -hmm. I had to do like my first pin was $11 and every pin after that I wanted was eight. So I had to like math that out. Right. So kind you just have to do that now. Yep, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And look, they have a cat that shows you how to do that. <laughs> Maybe we should send that cat to Aaron. <laughs> or myself. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. And I suspect then that if you pledge at this point, whatever dollar you pledge at, mm -hmm. once it comes time for fulfillment, you can be like, you know, you have the menu that you can buy other right. items like you can for most Kickstarters. 
um, which is nice because usually I get into this, I have to buy it now, like excitement, and then I go, oh, what, what, what do I really want? Yeah. You know? So, very. I mean, definitely cool production timeline. Again, the cat breaks it down for you. <laughs> this cat's smarter than half that's the people a, I know. A, that's, a, that's a math cat right there. Yeah. Well, this cat is smarter than a lot of people I know. Shipping before Christmas. That is a, that's crazy. Crazy talk. Unless it's like two Christmases from now. Well, unless they have local. Or, I mean, I bet they're well underway. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. No, Obviously, no, no. risks and challenges. No, it's and, a Kickstarter, so it will be late. But that's and again, fine. because I've been watch, I've been watching this. All of the images were up. They were teasing some of the images on Twitter. So you're right. When I'm sure prototypes had been up, you know, mm -hmm. for I don't know how long. So these are very cool. They're also lit really well. These photos are really nice. I wonder what they look like in person. I don't know, but apparently we'll find out. Hopefully by Christmas. Okay. So does that wrap up the wick? That does wrap up the wick. Now we're cool. going to get onto our featured topic, uh, which is we're busy. Yeah. So you're busy with your day job. Mm -hmm. Yep. It seems that being in virtual events paid off. <laughs> and I've been having to send out lots and lots of quotes for hopefully getting a virtual mm -hmm. job. Uh, gig is the right word. Production. Mm-hmm. But uh, how did you spend this weekend? Uh, tired, mostly. How? Yeah. How, how did you do? How did, um, how well, did last... you divide your time over the last Memorial Day weekend? We're building flats. We're redoing the studio. Okay, I digress. We didn't build flats. <laughs> Somebody gave us free flats. Uh, last week was uh, like a week and a half of me pulling staples out of them. There was like six different levels of production that had been stapled on the, stapled onto those things, mm -hmm. and to get them to fit flat against the wall, I had to pull all the staples out. Yep, I'm still finding staples in the carpet. So yes, be careful if you walk around um, here. But we uh, put a new skin on the top. We've designed uh, some. Are you gonna cut in some B-roll right now so that people know what a flat is, what it looks like? I don't, know, I don't know. The fact that they're gargantuan. Uh, they're 10 feet tall on one side, 9 feet tall on the other. Mm -hmm. And the corner piece we built 8 feet tall. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's nothing is going to look, look right. Mm -mm. You're going to walk in and you're like, Whoa. But our grid is 10 feet up in the air. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't do 10 feet all around. Nope. Absolutely. And then we chose some paint colors, which again. Ooh, yeah. We chose, I think. According to Discord. This is the equivalent of Amy asking, which color is the best color here? And see, I can tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Anyway. So I think... And on Discord, people are like showing two of the same color going, <laughs> which color? Like, tell me the difference between these two. And people are like, oh, never mind. Um, it's subtle. I think the color that we chose is my favorite color. Okay gray it's a dark gray mm -hmm. <laughs> as you can tell from my fashion sense the dark gray is my favorite color <laughs> and maybe blue yes yeah anyway so the reason why we're redoing the set at this point in time is that a nobody's here which means the studio is absolutely empty and we can tear everything down and move everything into a different room because nobody's here like we can just put things wherever we want yeah um we also have been talking about changing our rpg set for a while just for the fact that our backgrounds are essentially skin tone color. Yeah. So you really have a hard time separating people. It's just a bunch of beige. Mm -hmm. It just gets kind of into the same beigey beige that is, it just, it doesn't stand out. Yeah. It doesn't make people stand off the background. Yeah. And so we chose color that will make people pop off the background. Um, it's a darker color. So it is going to hopefully recess into the background, wear your skin tones, and if you wear color, like anything that's a color, you would stand out in front of it. Um, so that was the, uh, the understanding. And then I think the bottom, we're gonna do some wood, some like shiplap as Thomas has a... That's what the term is when I bought it. Okay, you didn't channel your inner Joanna Gaines yes. from HGTV? Yes. Your Joanna and Chip? I'm Chip, definitely. Anyway, uh, yep, I haven't hit you in the back of the head yet today. <laughs> nice. Uh, so when we originally kind of built out the two, the the board game set and the RPG set, mm -hmm. we really thought that we would be able to get away with 
like shooting on one and then jumping over and shooting on the other. And it, we just don't have enough space for that. So we are going to go down to one set. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, this will still be up and here, should we need to, you know, shoot Do something some on it, that's yeah. a little bit different. Uh, but the other set is going to be our primary RPG set, our board game set, uh, everything, our talk show set, everything mm -hmm. all in one set over there which so means it stays lit and all yeah. we do is move the tables in and out and the chairs in and out mm -hmm. as opposed to having to turn everything turn all the cameras around turn all the audio around um move tables back and move tables out depending on where it is mm -hmm. <sighs> and of course it's like 100 degrees today yeah and we turn off the air so you guys get better sound mm -hmm. so but i think i mean without really talking too much about it because we will have a separate video we're doing a lot of time lapse and recording of the building mm -hmm. uh so we will have that for on a future wick where we actually or a future untitled podcast where we actually talk about everything that went up into it mm -hmm. yep and i think where we are now is the actual putting the construction up on the walls yes. so we're ready to lock the flats into the walls um and then after you lock the flats into the walls, you obviously have to finish with the set design pieces because there are elements that are gonna go on there. We're gonna think about putting LED lights into some of the divider strips. And again, I'm just looking around because this is yeah. literally like right on the other side of the camera is just junk. Like everything is everywhere. Um, Yep, so there are LED, well, LED strips that'll go in for additional lighting. Then you have to actually light the set, light the people, bring your table mm -hmm. in, work with your camera angles. Um, bring audio back in and then do some test streaming to see what it looks like and mm -hmm. what compression is like and then done so I mean just because we've gotten some of the manual labor with the build done we're probably what like a quarter of the way there yeah yeah and mm -hmm. and we're at the same time we're kind of rebuilding the control room slowly as well mm -hmm. um, adding in components and yeah. technologies for virtual remote streaming which is what we do now mm-hmm Yep. Welcome to the new world. Yep. Okay. So that's so. kind of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh... <laughs> hey. I'm just going to hey, say, I was going to sit is... here in silence and just wait to figure out how long you thought of a word to say. I think that kind of sums up why uh, we haven't had as many untitled podcasts. As... We just skipped last week. Because yeah, I have to work week. 70 hours, yeah. and I think I probably put in about another 60 this week, and so I'm sort of just, my brain is not yeah. anywhere. And this week is more again for you. Yep, exactly. So this this will be another tough week. So you won't see me on um, Carbon 2185. I need to take Monday off because, again, I start Tuesday at 6 in the morning, and we just basically pull a bunch of 14-hour days all the way through Friday. Yeah, and then it's Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then Sunday after that, mm -hmm. then Monday again. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. That's yep. exactly how it works. So should we wrap this up? Yes. So Are we going to do a fake wrap or a real wrap? You should take us home. Well, I'm <laughs> leaving then. <if> you're... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Untitled Podcast. Thanks uh, and bye.